Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Gretchen, physical therapist and MS specialist at The Missing Link. Every month in The Missing Link, I host a live MS-specific exercise class where I teach exercises to strengthen and stretch the muscles that we need in order to improve our day-to-day -day activities, like walking, stair climbing, getting into and out of your bed, into and out of your car, you name it. And every now and then, I like to put one of those classes on YouTube for you guys to enjoy. I hope you like today's class. And if you are interested in joining us for these classes live, check the comment section below where I'll give you some links on exactly how to do that. Welcome everyone. Today's class, we're going to be focusing on a combination of ankle and knee strengthening with the goal of reducing pain in the knee, but also improving mobility. And one thing I've mentioned before, but it's always worth mentioning again, is that oftentimes when you are having pain in a specific area as physical therapists, the first thing that we do isn't necessarily look at what's happening at the knee, but what's happening at the joint above and below. So if you're having knee pain, you look at what's happening in your hip. Is there weakness in your hip or tightness in your hip? And also what's happening in your ankle. Is there a weakness or tightness in your ankle? Another example would be if you're having hip pain, you would look at your low back and your knee because everything is connected. So oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes the point where you're having pain isn't actually where the issue is originating. So that means that our exercises today, even though we're focusing on the ankle and the knee, are actually exercises for the ankle and the hip. But together, those will likely improve knee pain and knee strength and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. As always, have some cold water nearby. There we go, okay. All right, so we're going to start with our cardio as always. Cardio is my favorite way to start because it primes our brain for neuroplasticity. So when you're ready, shake everything out, shake your wrists out, your fingers, then just lightly close your hands and we'll start with our uh, the arm swings. But I, with the word that just came to my mind to say was our running man. Never called it that before. I don't know why that popped into my mind, but swing those arms as best you can. Keep going. And as always, to get a cardio movement, it doesn't really require much different exercise than what you'd normally do. It just requires that you go faster or more power or more movement. So this exercise, this, if we go nice and slow, this technically is a strengthening exercise for your shoulder. If we go fast, you'll feel your heart rate increase or much bigger movement or add that power up towards the ceiling. So keep going and I'll count us down. We'll do our five faster seconds at the end. In three, two, one, and go fast. Five, four, three, two, one, and slow it down then stop. Shake out your elbows, but also your wrists and your hands. We don't want our hands staying clenched after our cardio. All right, our next one, my second favorite is our forward punches. So again, hands are very like this and punch forward. Ideally at shoulder height, but as always, if that causes any discomfort, just punch down towards your knees. Your hands can be in whatever position feels best for you. I tend to punch down like this, but some people punch forward with their palms facing in. No one really does the up, that feels like Spider-Man, <laughs> but whatever feels good to you. And keep going. Sitting up nice and tall, keep your shoulders down away from your ears. Punch, punch, punch. And same as before, we're going to end with five faster seconds. Not just yet, I'll count you down. In three, two, one and go fast. Five, four, three, two, one, and slow it down and stop. Shake everything out. All right. The last one we're going to do for cardio is upper body jumping jacks. Got a hair in my eye. 
So what this is going to look like, we're still sitting up nice and tall. Our palms are facing forward. Fingers are as straight as possible. And we're just going to come up and down, up and down. Try your best to touch your index fingers together and then come back down. Again, if there's any shoulder pain, just come up as high as you can go without that pain. So it doesn't have to be all the way up. So shake everything out. And when you're ready, straighten those elbows, straighten those fingers, and let's go up, down, up, down. Whatever pace feels good for you. Again, the main goal here is cardio. So whatever you gotta do to get your heart rate up. This is a tough one, so it does require a lot of shoulder strength and speed. Keep your core nice and engaged. Keep going. And we're going to end with five faster seconds. Because this one is more fatiguing, it's harder, and you get that cardio exercise quicker. So I'll count us down in three, two, one, and go as fast as you can. I started fast, so this is really fast for me. Your elbows don't have to fully straighten. And two, one, and stop. And shake everything out. Hopefully you felt the burn there in your shoulders and in your arms. Shake everything out and get a nice uh, stretch if you want, arm stretch, shoulder stretch, neck stretch, whatever you need. And we're gonna go right into our exercises. So we have four that we're gonna do. Our first one is for the ankle, then we have our knee, and then two for the hips. And again, the main focus is to improve that knee and ankle strength and reduce pain as well. So for our first one, one of my favorites, the ankle dorsiflexion. So try your best to sit up as tall as you can and straighten your knees so that your feet are away from you. From here, I personally like to bring both my ankles up at the same time. However, if that's more challenging for you, just do one side and then the other, and you'll do five and five. If you do both your ankles at the same time, we're gonna do 10 total. Slow and steady with a pause. So when you're ready, sit up nice and tall. Your head can look down at your feet, but don't slouch. And go ahead and lift both of your ankles up slowly, as high as you can go. Once you're there, pause. And then slowly lower. And up again, slowly up. Pause. And slowly lower. I was just talking to one of my one on one clients yesterday about foot drop. And she was saying that she doesn't necessarily have foot drop. She can lift her ankle up. But I was watching her walk. She had sent me a video. And she's just right. She doesn't have foot drop, but she has foot slap, meaning when she's walking, her heel touches the ground first, but it's loud. You can hear each step that she takes. And that is due to difficulty in the slow lowering that we're doing. So right here, where we slowly lower, that's gonna help, help reduce foot slap. And the slowly raising reduces foot drop. We've got four more, keep it up. And slowly up. Pause, slowly down, slowly up. Slowly down. Two more up. A little bit of a pause here and down and up and down and relax. You'll know you're doing that exercise correctly, first and foremost, if you see the movement happening, but also if you feel the tightness and the muscles working in the front of your ankle or the front of your shin. The muscle that is responsible for that comes all the way down to our big toe and all the way up to our knee, which is why that's also one that can help our knee. So you can let your legs relax. Our next one, we're going up to our hips to give our ankles a break and we're doing our clamshell exercise. So I'll face you for this one. So what we're gonna do, your feet are fully touching, the instep uh, of your foot is fully touching the entire time. You're gonna open your knees as wide as you can 
this is as wide as I can go. I know lots of people who can open wider than me, some not as wide. Doesn't really matter as long as you're as wide as you can go without your ankles rolling. So that's the first part of the exercise. We open and then we squeeze our butt, squeeze your glutes, and then relax and close. So we're gonna do 10 of those. Try to keep your best posture the whole time and engage your core muscles. And when you're ready, slowly open and squeeze your butt, then relax and close. Open and squeeze. When you squeeze, you should feel like you lift yourself up a little, then relax and close. Open, squeeze, relax and close. Open, squeeze. You could also do this, relax and close, with a resistance band. Sometimes when you add resistance, you're able to feel the exercise better and more clearly in the right area. You should mostly be feeling this in the outside of your hip muscles. Relax and close, five more. I, I sometimes don't like to use resistance bands right away because it might mean that you use different muscle groups. You're using the muscles that are already strong, not the weakest ones. But in this case, this is one that can sometimes help out. Relax and close, two more. Open, squeeze your glutes, relax and close. The squeezing of the glutes, final one, is I think the most important part of this exercise, relax and close. Because if you don't squeeze, you can open and close and it's pretty simple. It's still challenging, but it's easier than if you add that squeeze. You're more likely to feel it in the right area. Okay, go ahead and shake your legs out. Now we're going down to the knees. So we're going to do this different in our second round, but in this round, we're just gonna do our classic leg kick exercise. So I'll face the side. You're going to sit all the way back in your chair. If you're short like me, your heels might not touch the ground, but that's okay. And what we're gonna do is sit up nice and tall. Our bellies are sucked in, not sucked in, but tightened, our core is activated. And we're gonna straighten our knee and then pull back. So when we straighten, we're working our quads. I mean, we pull back, we're working our hamstrings. We're gonna do five slowly each side. And we're gonna do all one side first. So when you're ready, slowly straighten, take your time getting there, pause, and then slowly down and just bend as far as you can. If your chair stops you, push into your chair, hold and relax. Same leg again, slowly straighten, hold here, and then slowly down. We're holding for about two seconds or so and pull back as far as you can go. Pull, 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 pull that and relax and straighten. Hold here and relax and pull, pull, pull all the way through. Hold, hold, pull and relax, straighten. Hold it, down, and pull, relax. One more on this side, straighten. So when you're straightening, you should feel the muscles on the top of your thigh working. And then when you bend, especially when you're pulling it back, you should feel it on the back of your thigh or even behind your knee. That's your hamstrings. And relax. That's a tough one. That works your muscles heavily. Same thing on the other side. Shake that leg out if you want to, but let's do the same thing on the other side. So straighten, slow and steady, add that pause, and slowly down, and pull all the way back. Keep going, pull, 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 pull. and relax, straighten. It's important that you do actually relax in between and not go too fast, because these muscles tend to cramp easily, so allowing that rest can reduce the likelihood of your muscles cramping or spasming. Relax. Straighten. And down. Pull, 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 hold that. And relax. Straighten. And down. Pull 
pull back, pull, 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 hold, and relax. One more, straighten, and down. Pull and relax. Now, if you do have spasticity in your quad muscles, what you might find is that once you straighten, it takes a while to slowly lower your leg because your, your quad muscles got spastic. And that's fine. Just take that extra time to let it lower and then pull back. Also, another strategy could be to not straighten as far. So instead of straightening all the way, maybe only straighten here. Okay. Next one that we're going to be doing, our final one, is a squat. And again, this is going to be different in our second round. But go ahead and stand up. As a reminder, feet are nice and wide. Bend your knees. And then shoulders come forward as you stand up. You can also stay seated for this exercise. If you choose to do that, same, same directions as what I just gave you. Feet are wide and bend your knees. But if you're staying seated, the exercise will look like this and down, or if your butt stays down, that's fine, but you're pushing your feet down into the ground. And if you're standing, you're going to come into a squat and hold here and up. So if you are standing, make sure you hinge your hips first and then bend your knees. Otherwise you're gonna plop right down in your chair. So again, option one, reach forward. If your butt stays down, just push down through the floor and you'll feel your glutes and hamstrings activating. Option two, same thing, but let your butt pop up and hold. Or option three, you're starting standing and you come down here and hold and then up. Either way, we should all be feeling these exercises in our glutes and in our hamstrings. Okay, I feel some lint on my pants. All right, so whichever option you're going to do, I'm either going to say down. When I say down, it also means up. So choose whichever one you're doing. So go ahead and go down and hold two, three, relax. Down and hold two, three, relax. So we're going to do 10 of these down or up, hold and relax. I'm going to say move instead of down. Go ahead and move. One, two, three, relax. Move, hold, relax. We're halfway, five more. Move, relax, move. Relax and remember all of us, regardless of which variation you're doing, your weight should be in your heels, pushing down into the ground. Relax, two more, move, relax. Last one, move and hold this time a little bit longer. Keep holding, 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 keep going in three, two, one and relax. Shake everything out. If you were standing, you're gonna do the same thing just to sit down. So hinge your hips and then slowly bend your knees all the way. Once you're sitting, you can come up. All right, we're gonna do one stretch before we go through our second round. And that is our figure four stretch. So let me face you guys. So for this stretch, you're going to grab one leg and place it on top of the other. You can use your hands to do this. And then once you're there, sit up nice and tall. And depending on if you need more of a stretch or not, if you do, you can hinge forward, but keep a flat back. And you should feel this right on the outside of your hip or, or the outside of your thigh, but more so the hip area. And sit up tall and slouch and then let go of that stretch. And when you're ready, grab the other side. Anchor it to your lower thigh. 
Make sure your hands are keeping it there. This leg should be dead weight. And when you're ready, sit up tall. And if you need more of a stretch, you can hinge forward. Now, as I mentioned, this leg should be dead weight. This is, I don't have much hip mobility as you could see from the clamshell exercise too. So for me, my knee does pop up a little bit more. And I one time had a client who tried to look like me. So she was actively trying to keep her knee up, but let your leg relax. If your leg falls more open than mine, that's totally fine. All right, a few more seconds. And again, hopefully you're feeling this in your outer hip or outer thigh. When you're ready, sit up tall, slouch to let that stretch go away, and then lower your leg. Shake things out. I'm going to take a sip of water. You can too if you haven't yet. All right. So we're going to go through it again. Two of those four exercises are going to be slightly different this time, but we're going to start with our ankle dorsiflexion again. So as a reminder, you can do one leg, one ankle five times and then switch sides, or you can stick with me and I'm going to do both at the same time, 10 times total. You should choose whichever option gives you the best quality and the best movement. So you're sitting at the edge of your chair, straight in your knees so that your feet are a little bit further away from you and sit up tall. Then look down, keep good posture, but your head comes down. And when you're ready, slowly lift both ankles, pause, and slowly down. Slowly up, pause, slowly down. Slowly up, pause, slowly down. Slowly up. This is number five. So if you are doing one leg and switching, go ahead and switch now. Slowly up and down. Slowly up and down. Slowly up and down. Two more, slowly up. And again, if you have any form of foot drop, foot drag, foot slap, there's so many different variations of ankle weakness that can cause difficulties in your walking. This is gonna be one of the best exercises. Relax and shake everything out. You can let your posture relax, let your belly hang out. Everything's relaxed. All right, next is our clamshells. So we're going up to our hips. So thank you guys. As with the first exercise, we're still sitting towards the edge of our chair. That tends to make this exercise a little bit easier. And your feet are staying uh, touching. The instep is touching uh, the entire time. Then you're gonna slowly open your knees Squeeze your butt. Hopefully you can feel your glutes activating and it raises you up off your chair about an inch or half an inch. Then relax and close 10 times. Slowly open and squeeze. Hold that squeeze. Even if you don't feel it activating, hold it. Then relax and close and open. So even if you don't feel your glutes activating, still attempt to squeeze and hold. Relax and close. There's something called gluteal amnesia where your glutes fall asleep and you don't use them for a while. They don't activate. And so they're in this amnesia state. And the way that you wake them up is by using them again. So that's what we're trying to do here is waking up the glutes. Relax and close. Open, squeeze. Relax and close. Open, squeeze, relax, and close. That was halfway, five more. Open, remember your feet are staying touching the whole time. Don't let them come apart. Relax and close. Open, squeeze, relax, and close. Open, squeeze, 
relax and close. Open, squeeze, relax and close. I know this is getting more challenging for me. Hopefully you guys feel that too. Open and squeeze, relax and hold. Ooh, one more. Open and squeeze, hold, hold, hold. Relax and close. Again, hopefully you're feeling that somewhere in your hip area, your outer glutes. Go ahead and shake those legs out. The next one is our leg kicks. So we're seated, straightening and bending of our knee, but this time it's going to be a little bit different. So the reason, or not the reason, the way that this is different, we're still sitting all the way back in our chairs. So if you haven't already, scoot all the way back. You have good posture, so your back is up straight, your belly muscles are engaged. What you're going to do is we're, so instead of doing five and five of just repetitions, we're adding longer holds, a 10 second hold. So we're gonna do three each side, but it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna straighten and we're gonna hold for 10 seconds. And then we're gonna bend and pull, 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 squeezing that hamstring muscle for 10 seconds. And we're going to do the other side. And we'll do that three times each side. So six total. The goal is the hold. It works our muscles differently than when we're just shooting for higher repetitions. So when you're ready, you can start with either leg. Go ahead and slowly straighten the knee and hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, slowly bend and pull all the way back. Pull, pull, pull. Once you're pulling, hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax and regretting holding that one for 10 seconds. That made my leg cramp a little. Other side, slowly straighten and hold. Hold. Holding in this way allows your muscle to have more endurance. So you're holding, you're activating it for a longer period of time. Four, three, two, one, and slowly bend all the way and pull back and hold. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, keep pulling, pulling, pulling. One, and stop, relax. Shake out both legs. We're a third of the way done. Back to the original leg, slowly straighten and hold here. So this is the quad muscles we're tightening. The, the, the stronger your quad muscles, the less your knee will buckle and give way, but also the less your knee will hyperextend. Keep holding, four, three, two, one, let that leg come down and pull back, pull, 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 hold. You should be feeling the muscles behind your knee. Four, three, two, one, and relax. Other leg, go ahead and slowly straighten and hold. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and slowly bend and pull back. These types of exercises where we're adding longer holds are also really great for people who have knee pain due to arthritis. When you have arthritis, you don't wanna do lots and lots of repetitions, you wanna hold. Good, and pause there. Shake everything out, one more each side. All right, when you're ready, straighten that one leg. Hold, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slowly let that come down. Again, if you have spasticity, it might make it even slower. Pull back, hold, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Last one, straighten that knee. And again, hold it here. One thing that you might happen 
that you might see happen is your knee might slowly start to bend, even though we're trying to hold it straight. That's okay. Just do your best to keep it straight. Three, two, one, slowly bend and pull back and hold. Four, three, two, one, and relax. That can be a tough one, especially for the hamstrings. Go ahead and shake everything out. Our last one is our squats. And again, this is gonna be different too. So last time we did 10 repetitions. This time we're adding the hold. So what this is gonna look like, if you're staying seated, you won't be able to see it as much, but your feet are wide, your knees are bent just a little bit, and you're gonna lean forward and push down through your feet as if you're attempting to stand up but you're gonna hold that, um, hold that push down for five seconds. If you are doing this option number two, your butt does come up and you're staying here for five seconds. If you're doing the standing option, we're gonna stay in our squat for five seconds and then come back up. So I'm gonna say the word move and you're either gonna squat down or come forward. We'll hold it and then we'll uh, what release after the hold. So pick your option, doesn't matter which one. If you're doing the squat, remember you're hinging your hips back first and then coming down. So when you're ready, go ahead and move and hold five, four, three, two, one, and up or down, relax. Good job. And down again, hold. You should be feeling the body weight in your heels. That's what's going to activate your glute muscles and your hamstrings. And up or down, relax. Again, move, hold. And up. So again, we're training these muscles for endurance to last over a longer period of time down or move. And relax. Move. Uh, if you are standing, I just remember to keep your knees out. What reminded me is that I felt my knees cave in a little. Keep them out and relax. We're going to do three more. Down or move. Hold. And relax. I'm going to face you guys for the last two, just so you can see my front form. So my feet are nice and wide. This is much wider than my normal stance. So feet are wide. Hinge your hips and move. Hold. I'm trying my best to keep my knees straight and not caving in. And up. Ooh, I feel this in my glutes and in my quads. One final one. Move. Hold. And relax. You can either stand up or sit down, but if you do stand, now we're just going to sit down by doing the same thing. So hinge your hips and then slowly bend your knees until you're sitting all the way. <laughs> nice job. That was a full, full lower body workout. Uh, again, for the knee and the ankle, but also through utilizing our hip strength as well. So awesome job. Let's end with that stretch as well. The, oops, um, that figure four stretch. It's one of my favorite ones to loosen everything up. So grab one of your legs. If this is too challenging to get into this position, you can always just cross your ankle. Once you're here, relax this leg, dead weight. Sit up tall. And then if you need more of a stretch, you can hinge forward. Sometimes you'll hear or see instructors tell you to push down on your knee or down on your lower thigh. I don't love that technique to get more of a stretch because it can tweak your knee. So I, I prefer the hinging forward with a flat back. Or if you want, you can put more weight through that side of your body if you do you feel like you need even more of a stretch. Sometimes I like just moving around while in a stretch just to see if there's a specific area that feels like a bigger stretch, actually leaning away feels more intense 
similar to how leaning on it does. So feel free to move around as long as you're feeling it in the right area, that outer, outer hip, and you're good. And when you're ready, sit back up tall and slouch so you should feel little or no stretch. Slowly lower your leg. And then pick that other leg up. Make sure to anchor it in place so the leg is just dead weight. And when you're ready, sit up tall. And if you need more of a stretch, you can hinge forward. So what I just felt is my hamstring kicking in. And it's probably because we just did all that hamstring work. But what that means is this leg is actually not dead weight. It's active. It's trying to hold itself up there. So I need to hold on more with my hands and let this leg just fully relax. And that releases. And now I feel it in my outer hip. All right, and when you're ready, if you can, just shift around a little, just like we did last time. See if there's any specific direction that feels a little bit better for you. And then when you're ready, you can sit back up if you were hinging forward, slouch, and slowly lower the leg. Shake everything out. I'm just gonna leave you with one final tip to remember as you're exercising, anytime you're exercising, which is that you might look different than me, than your neighbor, than your family member when you're doing these exercises. And it doesn't even boil down to only the strength that you have or the weakness that you have or the balance that you have. Some Our bodies are all built similarly, but not exactly the same. Therefore, you might feel the same muscle activation that I do, but you look different than me, or you look different than the next person, which is why it's so important to know where you should be feeling the exercise, especially with these virtual classes. It can be hard to know, am I doing the exercises correctly or not? Well, the way that you'll know if you are, is if you're feeling them in the right spot, even if you look a little bit different. So when you are moving and exercising, have that in the back of your mind of where am I feeling this? And that's how you'll know if you're doing it correctly, regardless of how much movement you have or how little movement you have. And always as a final reminder, neuroplasticity requires effort. So as even if there's no movement with your exercises, as long as you feel the effort that you're putting in, that's what is required to get your brain to find or strengthen those neural pathways. So keep it up. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you for finishing class today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you felt the right muscles working. If you're curious what other MS specific exercises you could be doing to help you reach your goals, consider checking out my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link. In this program, I share all of my favorite MS specific exercises in the form of demonstration and explanation, but also with exercise calendars that tell you exactly what exercise exercises to do each day to help you reach your goals and reduce your symptoms. Plus, you'll also be able to join me live for classes just like this one every single month, as well as more classes with other expert teachers. And we bring in MS experts like neurologists and nutritionists into the missing link so you can ask them your questions. And of course, we have accountability as well. Check out the links in the description section so you can learn more about the missing link to see if it would be a good fit for you or not. And if you're only interested in the live exercise classes, check out the description section, I will put a link there where you can join any of our live group Zoom exercise classes. Thanks again for joining class today. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.